Welcome back to another episode of The Last Game Hunter, and it will be a bit of a talking background video as I upgrade this decrepit looking, really bad, probably paid a couple bucks for it at a yard sale. I mean, look at this, it is gross. You can see dirt and grime all inside the buttons. I probably bought it about a year or so ago, and it was bought in the purpose that I was going to do a new video based on not like the other one I did before. Look at the yellow. Just see that circle there? That is disgusting. Like, I don't know if that's cigarette smoke. I don't know if that's just dirt. This thing is disgusting. Now, always test your Game Boy before doing this because what if it does not work or function underneath all the grossness? You need the unit to be functional to do this job. Now, just doing this job isn't just doing it. I will explain as we go along here what you should and should not do as you're moving forward. Um, basically, I just wanted to pick this up at the time. It was missing the back battery door and stuff. And it was just a nasty unit. So here we have the kit. This is this part of the kit now. So you can buy the kit with or without. These are the tools. Everything you need is included with this kit. So you will need a three, like a Y screwdriver and a small Phillips. And they give you all brand new uh, D-pad and all your buttons like your AB and uh, your start and stop and I believe a new light uh, piece and so on. And these things are all needed because you don't want to use, after you do all this cleanup and you've seen like the dirt inside the buttons on the original, you don't want that stuff. So here's your fake make it look real <laughs> sticker. And there's your case. Now it does come with a screen protector or a, a new screen with the case, but that is not the one we're going to use. I'll show you what I'm going to use that for. Now we're at the, the V2 LCD kit. Now, what I gotta say about this kit, it's really cool. So you get your adhesive, of course, for your screen, uh, the screen, nice and thin, really nice. I mean, not much to say about it. It's got one clip plug into the ribbon cable. There's this foam here. I thought it was actually gonna be for something, but I don't think we need it in the end. Um, now this, this is the glass one we're gonna use. It is glass. There's no plastic to it. It won't scratch. That is what you wanna use. And then we have this thing here. <laughs> I was stumped at first. I was looking at it, reading it, and I was like, oh yeah, this is the little film you put on the screen so your electronic stuff, like the cable, don't short out on it. So this is a much needed piece. Do not lose that. It's very important. Uh, three wires come with it, and I'll talk about that later. And then you have your ribbon cable. Now what's unique about this kit and the ribbon cable is you'll see there's two connectors on, the, on it. There's a 40 pin and a 30 pin or whatever based on what unit you have. So just one cable for any use. These little things here, I was stumped. I was like, what the heck is that? Well, we'll talk about that later too. So there you have it guys. This is everything you get with it minus that decrepit unit. Um, but it needs to be done. Let's just revive and save this thing. The poor thing has been shot too long. It's time for it to become new. Okay, so it's time to take this unit apart. We need the motherboard. Um, there are seven screws located on this unit, as I point out here. Um, and once those are off, basically, you just need to remove the housing by just pulling the two halves apart. There's nothing else holding it in place, um, as you'll see coming up here. Um, a couple things I want to talk about. I do, you see screwdrivers over to the side there. These screwdrivers aren't the best. If you don't have a Y screwdriver, then I get it, use the one that came with it. Uh, I did in this, tried to, you know, use the original screwdrivers as much as possible. Um, I, but a small Phillips screwdriver is nice to have, you have a good one for the motherboard screws anyway. Um, anyway, there's the board, um, the cartridge slot. You wanna remove, like I just showed, a bunch of the little knickknacks that are not gonna be used anymore as they're gross, disgusting, and so on. You will not be using this in this upgrade, the battery contacts that, in some cheaper housings 
aren't there, you got to take them out of this housing. You don't need to do that with this. It comes with new ones in the case, which I found out later. Um, other than that now, um, so removing the video cable, just you see there, take two fingers, just pull it out. It's not uh, like the two clips. Take a little screwdriver. Do not hurt the cable. Be very careful. Let it release it. If it's not pulling out easy, uh, make sure the clips are released. Now, the two screws, you'll see here, I'll uh, point out where the two screws are. It's just two. You'll see I used my screwdriver. Just makes it easier. And it's loose. Now, from here, it's just these two spots. One here and one there. They're pretty obvious. And out comes the board just like that. Yeah, just remove all the old crap because you're not going to use it. The kit comes with all new, so brand new silicon contacts. You got brand new D buttons, brand new AB buttons, brand new everything. So don't worry about that screen we aren't going to use. Don't throw it away if the screen's still good because it might help you out re refurbish an older other one that you just want to keep stock. Now this thing is disgustingly dirty. The motherboard's dirty, everything. So what I'm going to do, of course, I'm going to clean this whole entire motherboard because it needs it. And especially when I put the cartridge in, it did not work right away in the beginning of the video because that cartridge slot is very dirty. So what I use is basically 100 or almost 100, 99% alcohol and an air compressor. Okay, so here's the alcohol I use, which is a 99%. And when you're doing the cleaning, you want to clean your pads. Um, and you want to pour, now what I do is I pour it down inside the game cartridge slot and then I take a high powered compressor from my shed and I blow it out. Then I wait about a day just to not use that board so move on and do something else. And the reason for that is, yes, the alcohol does dissolve, it should not be a factor, but it is a liquid. Um, that is the piece I talked about that we're going to use to protect the screen. So again, all your screws, new screws, buttons, everything. So you don't need your dirty old rusty screws or anything. They're all included. Now here's the sweet spot. Buying from this customer, all of your shelves are pre-cut. So there's a little more to pre-cutting this screen than there would have been with the others. The, you, got, you actually have to make the hole bigger. So this is all pre-cut. So I don't have to deal with it. I don't have to do it. And that is why I bought from this guy. Again, links will be below and of course all brand new uh, sides and buttons and so on and, and the battery uh, contacts are all new. Again, now see here, I'm going to take this, put it down, lay it so my, basically like it clips in, you know, kind of. And when I lay the screen in, that will protect it from dust and grime. I mean, you will get something on your screen, a fingerprint. I did it many times. So now we've applied the adhesive and these little pieces that I, I said we'll talk about later these are designed to go in you have to push that one right to the side now push them in firm because you want that to be all the way over because you need as much adhesive area of course for the screen um, but this will guarantee that your screen goes in and is actually put in place perfectly so there's a little peel off on them because there is a bit of sticky on these little parts to stick on the uh, parts that's not being adhesed on the, the product. So now there's your bottom part and you have that side part and that will literally put the screen perfectly for the resolution and size that it's needed to be. You cannot screw up putting the screen in now because it, it is absolutely perfect. And I love that. So here, when you're doing this, please be very careful taking off the plastic because your ribbon cable, it is a very easy tape, but I just want you to be careful because you don't want to pull on it and rip it. Um, and do take off the film. I know you don't want to, but you need to because you will not get it off after you install the screen. So when you're installing uh, the ribbon cable facing down to the bottom of the unit, never press on the center of the screen. You will crack it. Keep that in mind. Don't press too hard. Just kind of run your finger across so the adhesive uh, you know, gets contact and sticks. And there you go. Your screen is mounted. It's very simple. That's so far. This is a very easy, almost anyone can do job. And if you follow this torti uh, tortillo, <laughs> this <laughs> sometimes I can't speak, I apologize. Uh, but if you follow this uh, video, you should have no problem doing this whole thing all on your own. Okay, so now we're going to try and install the video cable. Um, so now you need to know, do I have a 40 pin or a 30 pin? In this case, this one's a 30 pin. 
And the beauty of this cable is it has both. It absolutely has both. Now, the one thing I had trouble with, of course, was getting that dang clip to clip onto the cable. And what I noticed is if I laid it down flat on the screen after, it was so much easier. But you see here that it's not the easiest. A uh, little bit of a pain here. There's not. It's mostly because there's not a lot of length to it. And you're trying to get something so small to clip in. So be careful of that. Now, one thing I did here, just to make sure, one, there was no contact. I know I can put that screen protector on. Wasn't thinking of it at the time, but this was a great option. Put this down on here. It gives a little bit of sponginess, so it's it's elevated off the screen, so I don't have to worry about it. And it was just a part, the center part of the uh, screen mounting material. You get the whole center, so why not use some of it? I thought that was just a better way to stick it down. And the other thing wasn't going to allow you to stick it down anyway. And you want this stuck down. So just cut a little piece off, put it underneath, stick it down. So now I would just fold away the pin I'm not going to use. And then I have the uh, 30 pin readily available to install in the uh, unit. Now uh, you're going to have to do some soldering. So that's coming up now where you, you got some solder points on there. And I'll try and keep the video as accurate as possible so you know what wire's going where um so you know what to do as that's going on so let's just get to that part and we'll uh, move on okay so i have applied some flux on the areas where i'm going to do this and pre-drop of solder so that way it's just easy you just heat it up, the wire sinks into the solder, and boom, it's on. Just kind of like that there. You see the brown? That is just uh, resin, or risin, rosin, rosin. I can never talk anymore. So anyway, yeah, just uh, a little tap. You know, don't make your iron too hot when you're playing around with the ribbon. I kept my iron around 300 degrees just to uh, try and be safe. I have one ordered for doing this, but it didn't arrive yet, and I just wanted to get this done because I wanted to play with it. So there we see the little uh solder spot there on the thing that i did i pre again put a real uh, little solder drop there to pre-do it and voila it's on be careful around the ribbon cable you do not want to hit areas that you don't want to be on as you can see there i just cleaning it up and didn't trust what i did so i'm going to just uh reapply and uh make sure that i don't have anything where it doesn't belong just so that, you know, when you put it together, you don't want to have the, the luxury or the, or the downside of having something bad happen. So it's always important just to be careful here, not to uh, touch the ribbon cable with the iron at all, as it is basically just a plastic type film and you don't want to uh, wreck it. So again, just use caution here. And if you're not good at soldering, please, this is not a big thing to be doing. But if this is not something you're comfortable with, find a friend that is and let them do this part for you because this is the only part. And again, just so you know, this does not have to happen. I believe not soldering these wires, all it would do is leave the unit at maximum brightness. It does not need to uh, be done as best I know. I will uh, check that and comment in the comments below to verify, but I don't think these wires are necessary other than to control brightness with your uh, left and right uh, finger buttons. And I believe using a select button or something like that, I have to look that up as well. So as you can see here, next wire is going in next to the first wire. Um, so I believe it's the last spot that isn't used. It could be the first spot, maybe it's the first spot, sorry, um, on the ribbon cable. So there's only three wires, there's four spots. I'm gonna leave a link to a video where I've seen this done so that you don't have to worry about it. Um, that way uh, it's marked out a little better. I just, you know, I did my best to show you guys, but uh, I'm not perfect. It, it, you know, you're doing something, you're trying to do it on your own pace and, and that's just the way it is. But uh, yeah, so now I got to solder it to the, uh, one of the left or right buttons here. I'm, I'm totally missed off on which way the unit's going, but one goes to the outside and one goes to the inside on the other side. As you can see here, we're moving it around 
and it'll be the outside on this one. So very simple. Uh, this one here, just heating up that contact, putting it on there. Not much to this at all. Uh, you don't again. You don't need to be a master solderer for this. It's just a ribbon cable you must be careful of. And that one's on. And then the other wire is going to go to the other side on the inside. So I guess one was probably positive, one was negative, and it doesn't work right unless they're on the opposite. So just cleaning it up a bit because I probably didn't like what I did there. Um, again, I'm voiceovering what I did here because at the time I'm just too concentrated on what I'm doing. I didn't want to be talking and filming, so I apologize for that. But this was the best way I seen fit for me to get this job done. And, and as you can see here, see any little mistake, remove the solder, redo the wire. It's not a big deal. I'm not a pro, even though I've been doing soldering all my life. I'm supposed to be a pro. Nobody is a pro. Uh, you always, I don't care how good you are, you make mistakes. And again, I'm using a thousand watt iron here turned down to 300. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, it, I have pro tools, not a pro brain. Now, here's something I do a lot. My eyes aren't as good as they should be. I am 48 years old. Wow, I can see my eyelashes are pretty long there. Um, I will look and make sure solder contacts aren't touching. I wasn't quite sure as there was a contact quite close to the other. And, and it's very important, of course, not to have them crossing or touching in any which way. You could just kill the board, arc something, or things just won't work. So I, I just trimmed off the little excess that made me think it was doing it uh, with a pair of uh, you know solder cutters. It's not a big deal. They weren't touching, but safer than sorry. Double checked it and everything was nice and sweet. Uh, another thing I want to mention, these wires, as much as I thought they were all the same length, I don't think they were because I found it hard putting the last wire on. I think I screwed up and if I would have looked it over from the beginning, I probably would have used a longer wire last and the shortest wire maybe for uh, the middle as that one doesn't really play much, it just kind of in the middle and I think that was a big mistake on my part. But anyway, I did get it to work. Uh, I did have the wire come up once and I had to fix it. So that was part of it being too short, but I did make it work in the end. So just pay attention to that. That was one thing, again, like I said, people aren't perfect. And there's no real instructions for this other than people like me doing this for you. And that is the way, you know, that most things are done. And I had to learn from something else too. So not saying that, uh, you know, I'm the go-to video. I just know this is how it's done and, and, and it was done properly. Okay, so now we got all the wiring done. We're going to uh, add the D buttons and the uh, A, B, uh, select, start buttons, all the new stuff to make this a fresh build, of course. And in the video, I don't show me adding the light piece, but there is a little clear piece that goes in where your light would normally be. And I almost forgot the uh, insulation sticker that I talked about in the very beginning. Now, because I used the other thing to stick it down, I'm going to cut it, shorten it, but there's a good reason why that is needed. So now we cut this here. We have a shorter piece to put underneath just so we don't have any type of spark or anything weird going on just in case you stick that down. And the other little piece, well, let's tape down the uh, 40 pin. We're not using it. Let's have it taped down. It keeps everything nice and in place and I still don't have to worry about that moving or something getting in there. and and sparking it so I thought that was a great idea so moving on now we are gonna have uh, the silicone pads the silicone pads yeah again not speaking very properly I apologize this mouth operation is taking a toll on me uh, so brand new silicone pads which is very needed when you're doing a restoration I mean I did that board you know with a scrub down with alcohol I don't want to put dirty old rubber pads back in or even try to clean them it's just not worth it. So from here we add our silicon pads. Uh, the beauty of this is we're getting close to being done. Now I did break the wire and I had to replace the wire. I am very upset with that as I had spoke about. It wasn't the coolest thing in the world but we got it fixed. Everything was back up nice and neat. Uh, again, I think there was a longer wire with the kit and I just stupidly did not uh, notice it or utilize it and that was a my bad. 
So now moving on, of course, we're going to, uh, there's, look, there's my broken wire. There it is, snapped the wire. When I was trying to put it all back in, it went click. Ah, <sighs> this was not a good thing, but fixed. <laughs> And I did jump the step here and put the uh, LNR buttons in and the side uh, trims. It's very straightforward. They're not like the originals. They actually have a, uh, a blade metal, which allows you to uh, put them in so much easier. So you don't need to worry about how accurate you are. Now, two screws, brand new screws, of course, back in here. We're going to have this thing looking brand new inside and out. One thing you want to do when you're checking your LR and make sure everything's okay. You're gonna have some wire there from what you soldered. Make sure those wires are not uh, in the way. So not, when I say that, not just in the way of screw holes, not in the way of when you're putting the case on, you're gonna cut the wire or pinch the wire because that causes a problem, but just not in the way so that when the screw goes down, you're arcing or you're ripping the wire work that you did because that just absolutely sucks. So let's just uh, clean that up a little. And then we're going to put this unit back down now and get these screws in. So seven new screws. The two short ones go to the top. So there's two at the top and then there's seven other screws. They're all the same length. They're the longer ones and they're the ones that go from the sides and the bottom. So two top, five more regular screws for the uh, rest of the unit. You don't need to worry about the short ones up top. <laughs> Always, and this is something I am definitely guilty of, test your unit before putting all your screws in. Make sure you didn't hit a wire. Make sure something bad didn't happen. And it's just a common thing to do. Now, remember the glass? Here it is. Now, this is one part where you need to go and take a look at your LCD and go, did I fingerprint it? Did I, uh, is there dust on it? So take a very fine cloth that isn't gonna release fibers and clean up your LCD screen before putting this on because when you put this on, you're going to be pissed if you see fingerprints. And I'll explain. You're gonna see something here. I was lost. How does this white thing come off? But it did come off on the inside, so please make sure you take that off for God's sakes. That would be the worst thing in the world to put that on and realize, uh-oh, not going to work. So I was mad at this because I fingerprinted it. But I fingerprinted it on the outside, but I didn't I couldn't tell. Right? So this is something that's gonna make you upset. So see the fingerprints? They're very visible, and I was like, rubbing, rubbing. Is it coming off on the outside? Ah, oh, it's coming off on the outside. All right, no worries. I'll clean that up after. I thought they were on the inside. For the life of me, I did not want to stick it down. So anyway, this is glass. Remember, only press the edges. Because anything, it is strong, but to press it in the center, you're going to crack it. it I don't care. You're going to crack it. You're stronger than the glass is. So just be careful. Do what I'm doing there. Press the, the edges only. Don't worry about your fingerprints because look, it cleans up. So look at that guys, beautiful, beautiful. I'm gonna call it the last Game Hunter edition. <gasps> I forgot the sticker. <laughs> you know, the fake sticker, I mean the, the real sticker that makes it, yeah, it makes it look real, but it's not, but it's fake. I couldn't get it on perfectly. You can see there the edge was a little bumped. But anyway, look at this. We now have a working Game Boy Advance. Look at the screen on this, in my opinion, absolutely beautiful what I'm gonna do moving forward is I do have another build that I did with the uh, AGS 101 screen I want to see what's better which one is more vibrant which one is uh, got less screen tearing I want to know what's the better bang for the buck I have belief this is the better screen it, it is it is to be too it, it has went under a lot of different uh, R&D to make this work but who knows in the end the, the you know it, it could be the other screen wins but what I will do I will do a head-to-head -head video of this cheaper I believe this is around $60 Canadian you cannot go wrong that is including the housing cut everything and ready for you how can you go wrong the other kit will cost you about a hundred to hundred and fifty dollars Canadian I don't see how that wins for the money but we'll We'll find out. So I did a darker picture here. Just turned the lights off. I just wanted to see what it was like. It's just absolutely beautiful. Guys, game over.